tangled in the call to worship. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts. My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow has found her a house and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my sovereign and my God. Happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you.
The call to confession is a call to experience God's mercy. In admitting the truth of our lives and our loving creator, we open ourselves to the experience of grace and healing. Trusting in that divine love, I invite you to stand, if that's comfortable for you, and let us pray together. Creator God, it is beyond our understanding how this world came to be. Composed of complex ecosystems and a carefully balanced natural order, teeming with countless species of plants and animals. Yet we know you call us to steward this amazing creation. We confess that we humans have lost our sense of awe and wonder of the majesty of creation. We have treated the creation with greed and exploitation. We confess that our race now threatens death to the planet entrusted to our care. With you, we mourn the destruction of ecosystems and the extinction of species. As we celebrate today the animal kingdom, we confess our selfishness, our indifference, our cynicism, and ask your forgiveness. Draw us back to your paths of renewal and recreation. Inspire us by these animals among us and renew us with wonder and awe at your creation. Send us forth, empowered to act with justice and mercy to renew creation. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone, a new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven and freed to love and serve. Alleluia. Amen. Welcome this morning. It's good to see some, so many of our four-legged friends. We have cats and dogs, and uh, I'd like to welcome everyone here this morning. Special welcome to Wendy McCormick, our guest minister today. Uh, I think many of you know Wendy, and it's good to have her back with us today. My name is Susan Coleman. Uh, I have been a member of First Pres for 20 years. It's hard to believe that, but it has been 20. Um, I served early on as a Stephen minister, which our church no longer has, but that was a great experience for me and a good experience for the church as well. I've served on several committees throughout the years, and I'm happy to be your liturgist this morning. Uh, just to highlight a few of the uh, bulletin highlights of things going on in this week of the church, the elder of the week this week is Penelope Pennington, so if you have any needs, she would be the one you direct your needs to, and she would find the help that you need this current week. Uh, the Tri-State Food Bank is still in need of volunteers, so you can check the bulletin for that and see if that would be a way that you could serve uh, through the church to the community. Next Sunday is World Communion Sunday, so for those of you at home that are worshiping with us, you may want to have communion elements available uh, next Sunday, but that will be coming up on October 4th. So I think that's pretty much it. Uh, we are going to have music also on Thursdays at 12, so Robert will be um, providing some musical inspiration for us on Thursday at 12. As we turn to scriptures this morning, let us pray that we hear anew the word of God. God of mercy, Grant that the word you speak this day may take root in our hearts and bear fruit to your honor and glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The first lesson today is a responsive reading, so you can join in with me when your uh, call comes. It's from Psalm 104. You, O God, made the springs into rivers that flow between the mountains. All the animals drink their fill from them, and the wild donkeys quench their thirst. Beside them, the birds of the air make their nests. Among the branches, they lift their voice. From your dwelling on high, you water the mountains. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of your works. You make grass grow for cattle and plants to serve humankind, that they may bring forth food from the earth. Wine to gladden human hearts, oil to make the face shine, and bread to strengthen the human heart. The trees of the Lord are well supplied, the cedars of Lebanon that you planted, in which the birds build their nest while the stork makes the fir trees its dwelling. The high hills belong to the mountain goats, and the stony cliffs are a refuge for the badgers. 
all of them look to you to give them food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it, you open your hand, and they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, and so you renew the face of the earth. Good morning. I want to add my greetings to Susan's, to those of you here in the sanctuary, and to everyone in virtual land. I've been on the other side of the camera a lot more since March, so I, I kind of know what it's like out there, and it's wonderful to welcome you from here. I want to add a special word of thanks from myself and from our family. Kevin is having just an amazing time of renewal. And yes, it's possible by a grant, but it's also possible because you have an outstanding staff. I mean, this is a well-oiled machine. So my thanks to Laura and Jerusha and Robert for making things happen all week and today, and also to the volunteer elders who are keeping things running. The second reading this morning is from the prophet Isaiah. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. May God bless our hearing and our understanding of the word.
There have been so many losses this year. Losses we never could have imagined when we gathered a year ago for this ritual. The unspeakable loss of life, the loss of financial security, the loss of cherished modes of education, the loss of confidence in our leaders, big losses. And there have been lots of little losses too, simple pleasures we took for granted like hugging a neighbor or lingering over coffee with friends at church or singing spontaneously. Like everyone else, our daughter Lydia has endured a string of disappointments as one activity after another was postponed or canceled indefinitely or shut down. When they announced this summer that the fall festival would not be happening, it finally put Lydia over the edge. She declared, this is the worst 2020 ever. And I imagine we all agree. But I also want to tell you about someone who would probably say that this is the best 2020 ever. He would say that the people are home all the time. They spend a lot of time on the couch. They have time to go on walks. And their defenses are way down when it comes to table food. I can say with full confidence that Buckeye the dog loved quarantine. He's not here today, but he is blessed with a capital B. If you're a pet person or if you know a pet person, you may well have similar stories to tell. As we have hunkered down, our pets became more important than ever. And even now, as we cautiously move about more than in those early days, Many of us carry unacknowledged anxiety and exhaustion at the seemingly endless pandemic stretching before us. A psychologist friend of mine told me early on in this situation, there's nothing harder on the human nervous system than chronic uncertainty. That was in April. And uncertainty promises to stretch far into the future. So for many of us, our pets are providing security and comfort in ways we didn't even know we needed. Walking the dog, stroking the cat, provides some calm and comfort. And caring for our pets gives us a sense of control that we can't get any other way. Once, when Jesus was criticized for healing on the Sabbath, violating the commandment not to work, he famously said, but don't you feed and water your animals on the Sabbath? Caring for animals doesn't ever take a day off. It's essential work. Even when the world is turned upside down, you still need to feed the fish, change the litter box, walk the dog. And that little slice of normalcy has had a way of keeping us sane. Such a crucial need have pets filled during this season that more and more pets have been adopted. Ask our Presbyterian vets, Roger and Jessica. They are seeing lots more newly acquired kittens and puppies in their practice. And if you're not a pet person, you may have found some of this same strength and comfort in gardening. The principles are the same. Caring for your flowers and vegetables can give you the comfort and stability and sense of normalcy of having a pet. So if nothing else today, we give thanks that our gardens and our pets, however we experience the natural world, have carried us through and promised to carry us through the uncertainties of this pandemic stretching before us. Thank you, God, for Buckeye, who is only too glad to go for a walk or snuggle on the couch when I really can't do anything else. And thank you, God, for Rudy, who comforts Lydia and brings her daily joy and companionship through the worst 2020 ever. Thank you, God, for the flowers that ask nothing more than a little water and weeding to bring beauty to our environment. We come today in gratitude. And we come also in hope. Hope in God's shalom, the wholeness, the well-being of all creation, beautifully envisioned by the prophet Isaiah. God's shalom, the wholeness and well-being of, of creation is more than we allow ourselves to imagine. More than hoping we don't get sick. More than hoping the election will be fair. 
This glorious, some would say fanciful vision, is Isaiah's way of reminding us that God's heart, God's dream is so much deeper and wider than we're capable of considering. The wolf will lie with the lamb. The calf and the lion and the yearling together, led by a child while a toddler plays near a poisonous snake. The human ways of hurt and destruction will be no more. It's as if Isaiah says, just close your eyes and imagine it. Imagine enemies coming together. Imagine all creation, including its human members, motivated by peace and living together in God's shalom, putting aside the ways of hurt and destruction. May this day not only comfort and reassure us, not only fill us with gratitude for the ways in which our pets sustain us during these difficult days, but may it also invite us to dream and to imagine and yes, to hope. To hope in the wholeness of all creation, the evaporation of the impulses to hurt and destroy, the lambs and the yearlings filled with courage, and the wolves and the lions filled with calm. Maybe you're like me and you have an inner narrative that says, that's crazy, things are bad. But today, just for a moment, we're invited to set that aside and drink in some hope, some peace, to ground ourselves afresh in God's vision of peace and wholeness, and to remember that there is more to life and more to faith than the troubles of these days. Maybe today you'll allow yourself to dream and imagine as you spend time with your freshly blessed pet. Maybe you'll Google some images of animals or some great art like Edward Hicks' famous painting, The Peaceable Kingdom. Or maybe you'll tune into Nat Geo and take in a program about the majesty of God's creation. The point is to let today, this annual ritual, this time of worship, reconnect us to hope because it's so easy to lose hope as we realize the ways in which we've put too much faith in human systems. So sure elections would always be fair, so sure leaders would always be trustworthy, so sure our fellow citizens would always be motivated by the greater good. We've put our trust in some things we can no longer trust. It's easy to lose hope. But we dare not lose hope. We dare not lose our real hope. Hope in the one who created this carefully balanced creation, teeming with plants and animals, arachnids and insects, fish and birds, and yes, even people. As we focus today on our pets, may they inspire us again to hope in God's promises, in the unshakable values of our faith, in God's shalom. Surely it's only with that hope that has roots reaching back through generations of ancestors who knew worse times than we have. Surely that hope will help us to move forward as faithful, peaceful people, setting an example of what it is not to hurt or destroy. Every once in a while at my house, we catch a glimpse of Rudy the cat and Buckeye the dog enjoying a physically close, companionable, affectionate moment together. They don't want us to know. If we catch them, Rudy quickly runs away. It's as if we're not to believe they could lie down together. We're meant to continue to believe in a world dominated by adversity. But every now and then we glimpse it. And today's kind of like that. A glimpse of the peaceable kingdom, a glimpse of God's shalom, a glimpse of the hope we need to carry on another day. Amen.
as we come to this time of blessing, if you're at home, get your pet near you. If you're here, the procession is going to come down this aisle and back that one. So we want to move that way, even if it's a little bit of a long walk to be safe. Oh, I have to get my mask. Wait. So Susan and I invite you to join us in the litany, and then Robert and Sarah have some lovely music for a pet parade. Will you join me? For puppies who think puddles are perfect for baths, would-be hunters that chase squirrels in their dreams, rescue dogs that search tirelessly through toppled buildings, companions guiding the disabled and distressed, for eyes in whose depths we see God, Soft mouths which open doors, greeters at the end of hard days, ball chasers and stick fetchers who get us moving. For every lab and lasa apso, for every border collie and sheepdog, for every golden retriever and great dane, for every furry four-footed friend, we give, we give you, you thanks, thanks. One, one whose, whose name spelled backwards is dog, for those companions who shadow us through life. For canaries that sing carols at evensong, finches that lullaby us in the morning, budgies who talk our ears off, cockatiels who whistle to catch our attention, caiques whose eyes twinkle with mischief, macaws thinking up new ways to trick us, cockatoos that cling to us 24-7, parrots with their imperial nature, for every squawk and treat, for every flitter and flutter, for every feather which brushes our cheek with gentleness, for every beak which nips us with grace. We give you thanks, thanks God, God of six-winged six seraphim, seraphim, for the, the birds who send our hearts heart soaring. soaring, for mama cats who carry their babies to safety by the scruff of the neck, seniors who sleep their days away, frightened felines who hide in the smallest places, comforting cats who purr grace into our depths, Kittens who stalk sunbeams across kitchen floors. Mousers who keep our barns and basements free of problems. Foot warmers on bitter winter nights. Tree climbers who thwart every rescue attempt. For every tiger and tabby, for every Manx and Maltese, for every tortoiseshell, marmalade, and Russian blue, for every loquacious Siamese and every soft-spoken Scottish fold, for every short hair, long hair, no hair, and in between, we give, give you thanks, God of gentle contemplation and contentment, for those feline friends who see us for who we are, even in the shadows of our lives. For gerbils which teach kids responsibility and remind us of the value of smaller spaces. For hamsters which show us how to compost and whose variety reflects the rich diversity of creation for cottontails and flop-eared bunnies whose curiosity knows no bounds, for leopard geckos and bearded dragons which show us that it's okay to take time to relax, for garter snakes, corn snakes, and king snakes, for spiders, mice, rats, and other critters, we, other critters some abhor but we adore, for tropical fish like neon tetris and harlequin rasporus, for algae eaters, loaches, and silvery minnows who drive cats crazy. For the rich rainbow variety of your creation and for all those we are given to love and care for by your grace. We give you thanks, God, every creature here below.
That went very well. Congratulations. Jesus' whimsical illustration of a camel trying to pass through the eye of a needle certainly does not mean that it is impossible for the wealthy to enter God's kingdom. It does mean that when the piling up of riches becomes an end in itself, rather than a means toward an end, that is debilitating. The rich man's understanding of stewardship is all important here. Love must be directed toward God and people who can return love and not toward wealth, which cannot. Thank you for sharing your love with God and neighbor. Remind us, O oh God, that we are more than our bank balance. Created in your image, we are designed to love. Free us from shackles, hesitancy, and our need for more. Free us to show love in thought, word, action, and giving. Liberate us to give, to love, and to be your people. Amen. As Robert is finishing harvesting the prayer requests from our virtual community, I invite you here in the sanctuary to share your prayer request this morning. Yeah, Casey. Students, teachers, and support staff in our schools, thanks. More to come. Oh my goodness. These are prayers from our Facebook community for our endangered democracy, for Karen as she grieves the unexpected loss of her dog Asher, for nature's beauty, for First Prez's message, for all those in need, for the Sponseller family, for all who are quarantined or isolated, especially those in residential settings or one-person homes, for Katie, hospitalized with COVID and pneumonia. We're gonna pause for just a moment. There's a few more prayers coming in. Thank you. Oh, Katie, hospitalized with COVID and pneumonia, is 31 re weeks pregnant and may require an emergency delivery. My goodness. For Crystal, who is seeking employment, prayers of thanksgiving for the life of theologian Virginia Ramsey Mollencott, the hero of many LGBT persons, and for all who are feeling helpless and worried about politics. Let us join our hearts and spirits in prayer. Gracious God, we are so blessed to be gifted with life and with the faith to know you and to glimpse the world through your eyes. We give thanks for so many blessings in our lives, especially the gift of faith and the opportunity to gather as a community of faith in this space and across the miles through technology. We give thanks for the ways in which you have touched our lives, especially in the week gone by, little ways we may not have noticed at the time. Today we thank you for nature's beauty, for this congregation and its message, for the saints who have gone before us, especially Virginia Ramsey Mollencott.
And we pray, God, that you will fill us with a sense of gratitude and blessing, that our eyes may, may see the goodness around us, may be motivated by thanksgiving and wonder. And we do pray for many needs, the needs of our world and our nation and our community, and those known to us who are hurting today and in special need of your grace. We pray for Karen in the loss of her dog, for the Sponseller family in the time of illness, for Katie suffering COVID and pneumonia during her pregnancy, for Crystal seeking employment, for a friend anticipating a heart procedure, for all those who are grieving, for all those who are in need, for all those who are quarantined or isolated, especially those who are in residential settings or living alone. And God, we are bombarded with news, news that many find troubling and worrisome. So we join in prayer for our democracy and for those who are feeling helpless and worried about politics. Calm, anxious hearts and spirits. Let all who are struggling in body, mind, or spirit feel your ground beneath them and your arms around them. Teach us to speak up, to act in ways that we can, and help us not to be overwhelmed by things we cannot control. Let the example of the prophets and of our Savior, brother, friend, Jesus, inspire us and give us hope. And now in silence we lift to you the special prayers of our own hearts, knowing that you are as near as our every breath, and that you care so about our needs. Loving God, receive our prayers and give us the courage to partner with you in seeking to bring them about. We pray with confidence in the name of Jesus as we say together the common prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Thank you, Robert and Sarah. Thank you, Jerusha, Laura, Susan. Thanks to all of you here and out there for being part of this wonderful time of worship. And now as we go from where we are to where God needs us to be, may God bless you and keep you. May God's light shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God lift up the light of his countenance on you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>